Okay, I thought it would be quite interesting to look at fly boxes. Um, there's so many different types of fly boxes and some of them quite frankly a complete waste of money and just don't do the job. This is a very basic way of storing flies, it's just simply a box. Um, the downside of that is you open that in the wind, your flies are gone and uh, you trip up and the way it's all gone. So I've got quite a few different ones in the back here. This one's one of these fairly pricey Japanese boxes. Um, this used to be beautifully neatly filled but I've been looting it to uh, put the flies into other boxes that I prefer to use. Uh, it's, they're supposed to be waterproof. I've dropped uh, these on several occasions and uh, mine don't float. So, uh, but I, I say not only really waterproof, but floating fly box. They're about thirty pounds. This is a a popular fly box that comes in three different sizes. Um, if you want a cheap fly box, that's a good bet. It's, it's not over heavy. It's quite strong. The downside of that is it's not a good fly box for dry flies because pinning them into the foam uh, crushes your feathers, spoils the appearance of your dry fly. This is another a Snowby multi-section box. Same problem as the, the first one. Open it up in the wind and your whole lot's gone. These weekly boxes for donkey's years used to be uh, everybody's dream box. But as you can see with this one, you can see all the rust. And this happens when you have just a tiny bit of rain. You open your fly box for it to dry out. A little bit of water gets under the hooks and starts rusting. Also these clips. The, the steel on them isn't as good as it could be and they tend to go loose and your flies rattle around. Probably a good box for night fishing if you've got your flies well organised you can, you can see what's going on in dim lights providing you wet fly fishing. Again, very poor for dry fly. This is a, a new box I've got from China. I like these a lot. Uh, when you first open them up, you're not going to lose anything, so you can, you can be a little bit on the cautious side when removing flies because, again, the wind will whip them away. But lovely for dry flies because you're not crushing, crushing your hackles. On the opposite side here you've got smaller partitions and you can remove these divided partitions to make the sections as big or as small as you want. The uh, downside of these is that they're just alarmingly heavy. You know, if you were going on holiday to Sweden or Iceland and your luggage was big fat to the weight of it, you wouldn't want too many of those boxes. Good fly box for small wets and nymphs, quite cheap, sensible thing uh, from Snowby. Nice and nice and thin, you can get two or three in the pocket without taking up any space. Uh, the Chinese box again in a slightly different colour and I've just used this uh, mainly for my wet flies for 
the likes of Loch Fishing, these big top dropper flies like the Claret Bumble and the Blue Zulu, I, I don't like them all crushed and, uh, and squashed, I like them to be able to bounce on the surface. As I said before, a good box, very heavy. Um, got these from eBay. I made a mistake with the first one, because it came direct from China, and they charged me far too much for the uh, for the packing. The next one I got was from the UK, and it was about half the price. This is a nice little snow bee box, ten pounds. Just a good little box for going out on an evening or for an hour or two with just a, a limited selection of flies. Good for travelling light. That's a, a similar theme to the other snow bee box. And these boxes I like quite a lot for uh, your wet fly fishing. You can you can organise your flies so you can clearly see what you've got in the box. You don't even have to open a section if it's raining. You can just simply just look through your plastic. Not over the price. This is a, a pill box that I got for dry flies. I thought it'd be a good idea with them all individual compartments. But the downside of this cheap pill box is that these things work loose in your bag or in your pocket and then dispense your flies everywhere. So not a good idea. This is a copy of the expensive Japanese box and uh, as you can see these compartments don't stay shut. The moulding is so close to being the original, it's, uh, there must be a copyright infringement there somewhere. Uh, that copy box, for instance, costs about eight pounds, where it's thirty odd pounds for this one. Uh, but at least the compartments stay shut. Quite a handy little box. You have a few a few wets that you might use here, and then your various dry flies. This is coming up to my favourite cheap box. It was in the uh, pill section in Amazon. And it's just nice for a range of dries and it, it has the problem of if you, if you trip or the wind is blowing, you will lose your flies. But it's small enough for you to cradle and, and just quietly remove a fly without losing the whole content. So the flies I've been using uh, these boxes for the last two years from dry fly fishing. Another variation on the pill box. You should be able to get these pill boxes for around about uh, anything from one pound to three pounds, readily available from eBay or Amazon. So I hope that gives you some ideas on fly boxes. Or oh, just one thought is uh, if you're thinking of there is. Uh, wooden boxes, I would avoid them like the plague because they do not stand up to practical fishing. Once they've 
Once I've had a few wet days, stuff starts to come loose and joints open up. So stick with your metal or plastic. Okay, please subscribe. We'll be in touch again. Bye.